Hello, this is going to be a little bit different. You've seen this interview players, you've seen this interview owners, but you ain't ever seen this interview a manager. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former crew manager and a man who has some of the greatest stories in football, David Dartel. It's the lower league look. 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 The clap, by the way, is something we did on week one and it stuck with just a random clap to start the episode. So we don't we don't know why we do it. But guys, we're back. It's week this is episode 13, Grant, of season two. So we're here, guys. Uh, welcome back. As you can see, Chris has, special changed, interview. It's Chris, Chris has changed again. Um, and we, we have with us, joining us today, how do we call you Dave? Do we call you David? What do you prefer? Big D? <laughs> Certainly not Big D. That's, <laughs> that's not. It's got probably different connotations somewhere yeah. for someone. Um, David will do. David will do. Uh, we're joined by... Uh, former crew manager David Artel joining us tonight, and we're gonna have a little bit of a chat about League Two. We're gonna talk about his career. We're gonna talk about hopefully, what you know, where he sees himself going next. Grant, you're excited, aren't you? Say I'm it. excited. I am great. very excited. It's gonna be another good one. I am happy to be back recording again. Who'd have thought it two interviews in a row? I know we we, we used to record weekly, and then we kind of got bored of it. Um, so we, we we decided to just keep it to specials and like when we have people on. So yeah, we're here. We uh we, we're good to go. So let's let's just jump right in. What have you been doing with yourself? Um, I think I have been busy. Not as busy as being in a full time job, obviously, but I've been busy. I've been um, visiting lots of football clubs, watching other people. I've done a rather comprehensive document. Uh, about my methodology and what I do and what I don't do and profiling players so that I can go into a football club and say, right, this is what, how I've had success. This is how I know I can get success. That's not me to say that it's the be all and end all. It's obviously if it's a different formation and different players and different skill sets, but you can amend um, mm-hmm. what I've sort of reflected on and what I've done um, so that you know, it, it shows that I'm, I'm hopefully know what I'm on about. <laughs> it's all right. We've been doing this for a year and we don't know what we're on about. We just wing it. Um, so I, taking that then from what you've just said there, you're ready to jump back in. You're ready to, to get straight back in. Is there any, how does it work when you're looking for a job? Do, I'm guessing obviously the higher up the chain you get, the Premier League, you know, like the, the top end managers, your Mourinho's, they don't go out looking for work, you know, work, comes there is it how different is it for you are you contacting clubs yourself or do the clubs generally come and ask to speak to you i think um both has happened um mm. so you know clubs have phoned me and said we need a new manager um we'd like to speak to you in, in other instances i put my cv in and, and they've then contacted me or not as the case may be um you know so i think there's there's no sort of sort of hard and fast rules about recruitment for football yeah. managers. Um, I think it certainly helps to know people. Without a shadow of a doubt, there's there's it's certainly um, not always what you know. It's yeah. very much a case of, of who you know. Um, and and in, in my experience, and like I say, I've only I've got to forty one, and it's the first time I've been out of work, so. The last six months has all been new to me. Um, but I certainly feel uh, that you need to know people. Um, yeah. You know, and, and networking is important. So um, I think that's, that goes a long way as well as what you can do for a football club, a football team, and, and what, yeah. what your vision is. So I think uh, there's, uh, there's lots, lots of ways to, to go about it. I think, um, and then you hopefully you get, you get a, a good club at the right time that's a good fit for you, and that's I suppose that's the next step. I think I think for you the the what's unusual, and we we kind of spoke about this before we came on. We spoke about sort of first time managers coming into to roles, and you find you know some are going to be successful, some some aren't. 
But for a manager to take on a first-time role and be at a club for five years in that first-time role, that doesn't happen. It's very, very rare that that happens. But you were you were at Crew from 2017 to to earlier this year. Like, how did you? First of all, how how did you end up at Crew? How did that opportunity come about? And yeah, you you, you basically did really well. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I think well, I, obviously, I played there. Coach mm. there, then I become academy manager there, and then I become manager there. So, so it, it comes from playing, coaching, senior position at the football club to then, you know, the, the manager. That's how that came about. I think the the thing is, in all my four year, first four years, we improved our position year on year. Yeah. So I think the first year we finished seventeenth was it, and fifteenth, and twelfth, and promoted, then twelfth in League One, and then twenty fourth. And even when we finished twenty fourth, we every year we've matched our budget or exceeded it. So we've always matched or exceeded where we should finish. You go, well, hang on, we finished twenty fourth. Yeah, we had the lowest budget. So I can quite rightly sit here in front of you guys and say I've never finished below where my budget should say. Oh wow! You, all, you know, we got promoted out of League Two with the third lowest budget in the league. Mm-hmm. It, it was ridiculous what we achieved. Yeah, um, and then yeah. finished twelfth in League One with the lowest budget was even you know. Then you sell five players into the Championship, you lose half your team, and then you finish where you should finish, where the budget says you should finish, because you've ripped half your team out as well. So it's you know that that's the business model. I knew that before mm-hmm. I took the job, so it's not a complaint. Um, but that's that's the realities of football. You then lose games of football, and it's your fault when really the business model suggests that that's always going to be yeah. the case, which. You know, I have to live with that. Um, well, that's the thing with Crew again. is Crew were uh, historically Crew have always been a selling club. They've yeah. always had that really good academy, haven't they? They've always produced yeah. really good young players. Yeah. Well, the and good that... thing about them them players, I, I had quite a few of them players that. Well, the players in the team now I coached at under nine. The players that went on, I had a either under thirteen or fifteen, sixteen, and then yeah. obviously in the first team. So I coached quite a lot of them all the way through. Um, so I knew a lot of them before I even got the job and certainly the academy manager I'd spoke to them even if I hadn't coached them um, all of them even if, even if in the sort of I took this age group and they were in this age group and I took that age group and they were in that you know I'd still seen them I'd still spoke to mm. them I'd still been uh, part of their journey so I knew all the players before I got the job and I'd had a hand in their their development so that helped that was, Yeah, people have always that. had that kind of level the level of respect over towards yourself, knowing what to expect from you, the style of play yeah. that that you that you like to to implement and play with them as well. Yeah, I think I think when you know when you first get get I don't suppose any job, but certainly when they, when I took over at Crew, they were I think they were nineteenth in League Two, and they were, the, the football club were looking over their shoulder, staring into the non-league abyss, mm. and and you know I, it, it's. It wasn't easy the first twelve months, for sure. Um, but at the same time, I, I knew that if I kept working with the players, because I'd seen where they'd come from, I, I knew where they could get to. Yeah. So all I needed to do, which was, which sounds trivial, but it's not easy at all, was buy myself time. Mm. And that that means you have to win games of football, which means that the players that you hope and develop win the games of football for you. Um, and it's not as easy and as straightforward as that. But at the same time, if you if you know, even last year, I, I go back to last year, we finished bottom of the league. Never, ever, ever went away from the principles and the philosophy of the football club. Didn't start whacking the ball. Didn't start whacking up to a striker or anything like that. We had tall strikers. Didn't whack it. No, play football. Yeah. Play the right way. Why? Because next year, whether you're in League One or League Two or whatever you might be, whether you get moved, you're going to need to play the right way because that gives you the best chance of being successful. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan when, of football. When, when you can then come through that, you know, you, you end up a better player. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not there anymore at Crew, so that's for the new manager um, or the, the, the next manager, actually, as it is now, to, to, to develop that. But you, you actually become a better player by sticking to your principles. I, one of the things I'm proudest of last year 
was the fact that I never wavered from how we played football. Now, you, some people might um, say, well, you should have, because you kept winning games. That's not the business model of that football club. No. I was doing the right thing for that football club. Ultimately, I paid, you know, I, I sacrificed myself in the end. Um, but I know that I left them, them footballers in a better place than when I, you know, took over that football club. And, went, and, and when I first sort of had the players, if you like, um, and I think if, if any chairman or, or board member, um, they could never level that at me. You know, I, I, I no. spoke to a manager who's actually, believe it or not, a Champions League manager. Um, he, he, he watched it in two games last year at Leeds away. We lost 3-0 in the, the first round of the Carabao Cup. 37,000 mm -hmm. first game at Ellen Road after COVID. We conceded some like 84, 86, 90. We were brilliant. Um, didn't deserve to lose. Um, and then we lost at Sunderland 2-0. They, they scored 82, 86. Something like that. Again, back three of a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, 22-year-old against uh, Ross Stewart, League One, Golden Boot winner and Jermaine Defoe. We were by far the better team. Miss three one-on-ones, lose 2-0. And this Champions League manager spoke to me in the summer and said, I thought you were magnificent the two games I saw you. Wow. You, because we, we played the right way. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and why did we concede late goals? Because we had a 17-year-old, an 18-year-old, and a 22-year-old back three. Yeah, we had we had a a striker that kept missing chances in both games, there, and, and, that, and that's the difference. But the thing was, we played the right way. We we still were developing, and I, I'd, I'd, not, I'd be in, in no doubt that if I was still manager at Crew, we'd, we'd be uh, still developing them players to play the right way, and uh, you know, and, and, in, and you know, start that sort of cycle again, or. or we started last year, but then developed that and to, and, to, and to get promoted again in whatever next year, year after. Now that's not my job anymore. So, uh, uh, how, job. how does a chairman pitch that to you? So, when, when you come, I'm guessing the beginning of last season, obviously, at any point, you really you'll have meetings with the chairman, but at the beginning, you'll have a discussion about budgets. Now, when you find out at the beginning of the season that you've got the lowest budget in the league, how how does the chairman sell to you that you should, even though he's giving you the least amount of money to spend, it's not acceptable for you to be the least performing team? How, how does the chairman... I don't understand how they can possibly think that that's a logical thing. Like, oh, I'm giving it any amount of money, but I expect more. I expect so much more than I'm giving him to... Like, how, how can they get that out because it's not just I'm guessing it's not just crew there's obviously every year in some yeah. league everyone's got the lowest budget or someone's got the lowest budget you're asking um, a question to someone that shouldn't really be answering it and it's for me it's a hypothetical question you have to ask the owners and the chairman and the presidents and, and what have you no, but I mean yeah, for you how, how do you take that on board and then well, go well, away thinking I can I can do something with this at, at crew it was always the belief that there's two ways of winning Football matches, or or develop and sell players. Yeah. Now, I believe that I was that successful. I was a victim of my own own success in the fact that we were winning football matches and I developed that many good players that half of them went into the championship. Right. Well, mm -hmm. which which chopped off my own legs. Well, if I did only develop one player, I'd have still had a good team. Do you think you'd have kept the job though if you only had one player? Because if you'd only developed one player, because they the crew need. It depends how much we sold him for. Well, yeah, mm. that's the yes. truth. It's a good point, isn't it? That's um, the truth. We sell, sell him for ten million. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. If we sell him for hundred grand, that's not you know there's there's and and you know the the you know with, with regards to crew, the, like I say, when you've got the budget that they've got and the resources they've got. And, and it's a properly run football club. It's a it's a sustainable football club that I think every fan wants them to be. Certainly in the first instance, and certainly when the you know the the, the whatever you name it, it's the fan. Um, yeah. Everyone then talks about sustainability after you've had it for three seasons. Everyone goes, "Oh, put your hand in your pocket." Well, actually, no. It's have been sustainable for a long time. There was only about thirty football clubs. I've never been in administration. The crew's one of them. Yeah. You know, and that's 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 something that should be admired. 
Mm-hmm. So when <clears throat> you know when when you're a football man, you've got to accept that that's that that's it didn't change in my time as from taking the job to you know to to leaving. So mm-hmm. you've got to accept that that's the case. What you do hope is that the chairman and the board actually go well. He's done right this this cycle because crew don't get enough players through. The academy is not as fruitful as it needs to be to sustain that sort of level. Yeah. You know, because if there were, you know, we could have sold two earlier or whatever. Although COVID didn't help, but you've got the ready ones next, where the next ones were seventeen year olds, not twenty one year olds, not twenty two mm-hmm. year olds. So the lads that were leaving were 22, 23, and the ones after that weren't 21 or 20, they were 17, 18. So there's a gap. Yeah. And that's not anybody's fault. That's just that's just how it works. That's just yeah. how it was. Um, you know, so you hope that yeah, you get... Our level the, as well. Yeah, you just hope that you get the time and the, the you know, the, the, the opportunity to develop them players... Um, you know, into a successful team like I'd done before, but, you know, they, they, they decided to make a change, which is, you know, it is what it is. Looking back, I should have left when we were 12th in League One. <laughs> yeah. Well, I should have. Yeah, you you know, should, I yeah really. You've, I, shouldn't you've, have, I shouldn't have trusted the chairman. Yeah. So, so I mean, when we look at you, when you talk about your, Yeah. When you talk about your budget, it was the lowest in League One. Yeah. Where was it, if you'd have taken that budget and put it in League Two... Where would it have well, been? Well we, had, well, we had the third lowest budget when we got promoted. And was how much of a difference was there between those two budgets? Uh, in, in terms of actual monetary, numbers. no, not 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 no, not numbers because you know, that could get us all in trouble. Uh, <laughs> but in terms of like, was there a big difference or no? Because we we understand at the very top of League One. There is a massive gulf in money to the bottom of League One, and it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, yeah, the, the, but, but, I've got to be sort of careful what I say. Really, um, the next the next budget wasn't too different from ours in League One. Right. Then after that, it was about half a million quid. Wow. Um, so steps up that soon. Yeah, yeah, and then there was a sort of between that number and another number that was probably about. 10 club, football clubs and then after that you start getting this level that level and the sort of like whatever the, the top nine teams go from that number all the way up to an astronomical number which is bizarre you know, for league one there, there, was, there, was, there was one player in league one for example that earned double the weekly wage of the whole squad the whole the crew crazy. squad easy the whole squad yeah. I mean we, we <laughs> which means he's a lucky chuff Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, see when that comes in, how does that does that unsettle the harmony at a club among the players at all when they know that one player is on significantly more than the no, rest of them? That's at a different football club. Yeah. Oh, a different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a different football club. Yeah. But, I mean, oh. we we thought that the money in League One. So like, we we keep quite a close eye on transfers and stuff, and there was transfers going between the players. That were in League Two going up to League One, and one player that was going up to League One was was offered, and we thought it was astronomical, was offered twelve grand a week. Now, by the sounds of things, that's not the highest, and it's the it, it's, it's, no. it's that's ridiculous how how they can throw that money about in League One mm-hmm. because that that comes back to sustainability, I, isn't it? I, I know there's one football club that's got the fourth highest budget in League One. Um, that's been in League One for oh, a fair few years now, and you know they're, they're there or thereabouts around the playoffs, but they're never in automatic contention. Wow. And they've got an astronomical budget, and they're sort of going by the radar a little bit. And it's like, well, you know, that's the the the, the thing is with budgets is that they are the biggest indicator of finishing position. There's been a lot of research done. Yeah. Which I might be doing myself out of a job here, but it's not all down to, to, to managers and coaches. It's the primary reason why you finish is budget and, and what you spend on players. Um, you know, so it, it, it is important. It doesn't mean everything, as I've just alluded to, to that 
that team in League One who who have got the fourth highest budget. The, the, the team in the Championship that has got the sixth highest budget. I think finished something like eighteenth last year. You know, oh, it, it, it's not it's not always an indicator of success. Yeah, but it's... it it gives you an opportunity as a football manager, football coach. You know, it's extremely difficult to to constantly um, overachieve. Because the numbers are stacked against, literally the numbers are stacked against you, and that's an yeah. extremely difficult thing to do. Yeah, and I think that's the for you there at Crew. It, it was always going to be an uphill. Every season was an uphill battle, and to, so to get the success you did, yeah. and the fans don't see that. So the fans don't. You know, no, no, no chairman or owner is really going to come out very often and go, "We've got look, we've got the least lowest budget in the league." They're not. They're not going to do that. We, we've seen. So Hart, I'm going to use Hartlepool as an example. They want to sell. They want to sell tickets. Essentially, yeah. they want people to come in. They want people to get behind the club and rally behind the club. So they're always going to say our budget is. Well, they're not going to say our budget. They're going to say we've got the lowest budget in the league. Yeah, but Hartlepool's owner came out and said he's given a playoff budget, and then we looked at the signings that were being made, and then all of a sudden he changed his wording to it's a playoff budget in the right hands. So it may be that it's the 18th budget in like in terms of size, it's the 18th smallest budget in the league, but the right person can get those players in and can do whatever they need to do. It's it's bad budgets always baffle me. They really, really do confuse me. But moving on from crew, next steps. You obviously you're ready to get back in. Parameters that you're setting, do you set any? Do you have like a, a lowest level that you're looking at? Uh obviously I guess there's no highest level, you know. Let's see if Man United come knocking on your door next week. It ain't going to be a pro- you'll get in there and sort Ronaldo out. Um, we'll deal with that. But is there a do you have like a, a a bottom where you're just like you know you've you've got success in League Two, you've sen- essentially success in League One. And you don't want to be dropping. Yeah, there's there's a there's a I think there is a, probably a bottom limit. What what I would say is the parameters. I, I want to be inspired. I want I want a project. I want I want an opportunity. I don't necessarily want to be um, fighting. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, money money was tight, crew. There's, there's no getting around that. Do I want a chairman that's frivolous? Not particularly. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want a penny pincher. I just want someone who goes right. This is where I think we could get to in a reasonable amount of time. Can you do it? Yeah, you know, and I, so I've spoken to quite a few chairmen in this last six months. Um, some good, some extremely impressive, but maybe not the right fit for me. Some not so impressive, if truth be told. Um, so, some just mourning about how much money they put in. And when you ask, well, what do you want? Do you want more bang for your buck, or yeah, you know, or to actually reduce that number? And when they turn around and go, oh, good question, you're thinking, you haven't really thought this. It's through, really, no. um, and it's a big red flag. So there's, there's, you know, there's certain things that um, has to be ticked. I think. Yeah. Um, but it's more about it's more about sitting in front of someone and go right. Between us, we're gonna we're gonna get this club where we think we should get it, and we want you to be a part of it. Um, and, and I've said that one or two have actually said that. One or two I definitely haven't said that. Um, <laughs> well, that's you know, and that's which is fine. It's that's not a, it's not a criticism. That's fine. It's 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 it's, it's all learning for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and you sort of go away and if they offer you the job, which they have, you know, and, and you sort of go, it just doesn't feel quite right. I, I'm more of a sort of like feel kind of person. An actual, yeah. does this feel right for me? Does yeah. it? Does it? Because there's no point me um, taking a job in the hope it feels right. Yeah, if because, you don't get that feeling at the beginning. Yeah. Exactly, because I, I, I just think... I it's almost like you trust your gut, isn't it? Um, that's what it is. That's what it is. That's all it is. Um, and, and if I didn't do that, I feel I'm an honest guy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to um, be taking a job on false presenters. No. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that to any chairman, board, owners, fans. I just wouldn't do it. Um, so it's got to have that initial. Yeah, this feels right. At the minute, 
Yeah. How much of it is when this sort of opportunity comes up, do you look at the, the squad that's there? You see that there's X amount of players on two year contracts and you go, um, I've got a lot of work to do here. Um, there's an element of that, but not not massive. Uh, just not from my point of view, because I see that as a, a an opportunity. And I see that as a challenge. I'm going to make that yeah. play better. Uh, you've got to be a bit careful because you've got 12 of them and you've got to make them all better. You might be cutting yourself a bit thin. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and you know, if everyone's tried, eight people have tried the Maver- to turn the Maverick or whatever, and you know, you've got to be realistic in what you can achieve with, with whoever that is. I use Maverick because that's just the easy word to use. Yeah. Um, I don't think there is such a thing as a Maverick, really. I don't, I don't think it's an outdated term. I think everyone just needs managing differently. Um, yeah, some, no, some no, need no. an arm around them, don't they? Some, some players need an arm around them, some need to just be left to it. Yeah. Um, some, most of them just want to be coached to improve. Yeah. I'm going to make you better. Yeah. You know, you tell me what you think. I'll tell you what you think. And between us, we're going to make you better. You've got to buy into what I believe I can give you. You've got to wear your socks off. And and between us, if you've got a problem, just come and knock on my door. Tell me. You know, and we'll and work think, it out. And- have you got? A, have you got a pos- right, Really, odd. have you got a position that you always go? This is the first position I want to improve on. Ensure is solid, or. No, that one player. The manager. The manager. <laughs> the manager. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, there's, you can't say that because if, if if I went into Man City, you wouldn't be saying it'd be the centre forward. Well, if you oh, I don't know. United, I'd, if I was going to Man City, I'd want to bring in Andy Cook and get rid of Erling Haaland. <laughs> Erling well, Haaland wears Andy Cook pajamas. Let's all just yeah. get that out there right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Put 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 the, <laughs> put, put the wire down. <laughs> yeah. Stop, stop okay. drinking. Yeah. Uh, but if you went to Man United, you'd be saying strike is probably one of the positions, especially with the news over the last couple of days. So, yeah, you, you can't, you can't, um, you know, be, be as I don't know as, as adamant as as what you're saying is clear as what you're saying because each squad and each team and each club is different, yeah. and, and you have to you have to go by it, and that's one of the challenges to work out what you need quickly. I don't get me wrong, if you're not in a transfer window, you, you've got, or coming up to a transfer window, you might have got a bit of time, but not a lot, because a lot of work needs doing before. Um, and you've got to give, you've also got to be fair to a certain point for the, for the players that are already there. Yeah. You know, how many players do you see a new manager comes in and looks like a different player? Or a new mm-hmm. manager comes in and looks like a, a different player in a negative way? Where, you know, and suddenly you think, well, he, he'll be all right, him. and then six weeks later you're thinking, he's not. What it's kind of know what it's all about. Yeah. You know, so, so, so you, you've, you've got to be fair. You've got to be, um, you've got to give each player an opportunity and, and training in the first instance of them opportunities. Go on, impress. Do what you, you're good at and then let's see see how we get on. And then, then you can make decisions off the back of what your own eyes and I suppose how you feel again. And that, so that what you just said there about you can have the same squad change a manager and then a player is a completely different player, even though he's playing in the same team, he's playing 90 minutes, he's playing in front of the same fans, he's playing like Crawley's a perfect example for me for this season. Obviously, they, they had, uh, oh my, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Betsy. How have I forgotten that? The amount of conversations <laughs> I've had about Kevin Betsy this season. Um, they had Kevin Betsy. It didn't work. I think they were on something like one winning 16 or one winning 14. He's gone, and in the league, they've they've not lost. They've literally not lost in it since. So you go back to the fifteenth of October since their last loss. Uh, sorry, sorry, the eighth of October since their last loss in the league. They've got four wins and two draws, and it's the same team. They that's that's a perfect example of two t- of, of two managers approaching things just a little bit different. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. I think that's part of management. I think mm. probably Kevin has probably learned a very harsh lesson, yeah. but he's learned probably a very good one. Yeah. You know, it's you know you can go in with all the best ideas in the world. You know, if you've got um, people who need managing differently, you've got to manage them differently. 
Yeah. I don't mean differently as in like radically. You know, if somebody's, I don't know, parents are dying, God forbid, you have to treat him and manage him completely differently mm-hmm. yeah. to a 19-year-old who is going to train every day but yeah. might need managing physically because you don't want him to, you know, come a cropper or get injured. You know, there's all different things that you've got to consider. Um, and all them things, all them little things, never mind improving them technically, tactically, what have you, and tactically setting teams up and, and all your players up for the game. There's all that to consider. You've got to treat the human being first. Mm. And, and and that that is probably more important. Because yeah. if, if, if them players think that, you're a good bloke. You, you, you've you've got their best interests at heart, both on the pitch and off the pitch. Well, they're going to give you the time to to, yeah. to listen to you and, and want to want to do well for you. And you know, and obviously, Lewis has done ever so well since he took over at Crawley. Um, yeah. Is it sustainable? No idea. Um, what I would say is that team that he's got, by and large, finished I think twelfth or something like that last year. So they probably yeah. shouldn't have been in the position they were in um, under Kevin. No, but, they made us look stupid know. because we predicted that they'd be. Well, I predicted that they'd be up in the playoffs. So they made. But we we did say, you know, for us when we when we looked at it, I've I've watched Crawley play a few times this season. Uh, you know, I went to Burnley last week and watched them in the cup. They, they played against Burnley. Don't get me wrong, Burnley this season have averaged sixty percent possession in all their games. So when they had seventy five percent possession against Crawley, it. it that didn't surprise me. They're going to do that. They're a, they're a possession yeah. team. But Crawley didn't look that far out of their depth. And yeah. I think you've got these you've got these players that obviously just needed to be managed in a certain way. And, and Kevin's come yeah. in with a complete change of philosophy. And it's like starting from scratch. Whereas Lewis has been around the club for eight years, hasn't he? And he's he so he kind of was able to take them back to the basics. So it's it's an interesting situation there because we don't we still don't know what's going to happen. You know, the, he's yeah. still interim, isn't he? So yeah, yeah. be interesting. Well, what I would say is he's steadied the ship. Yeah, he's steadied the ship. You know, you've got to understand that they've got new owners, yeah, new director of football. You know, they had a new manager. They've got an interim manager. There's a lot of changes that affect the team. They've got a new League Two sponsored podcast. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> the, the most, most important, of, most importantly, the most important. Yeah. And, and if you let me finish, I was, I was going to say they've made some mistakes, but you know, you obviously preempted what I was going to say. Uh, uh, I'm worried, obviously. Um, yeah, they probably think that every single day when we send them an email. <laughs> um, but you know that that's it's all this kind of thing. You, you look at Wrexham. You know, the, the, the Hollywood guys have been in there, what, two years now? Is it two and a half years, something like that? Yeah, it's two and a half, three. three. If, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, my pound would be on Wrexham Skipper mode. We've got the highest budget in the league. They're probably, you know, ready to go up now. But it's took them a year and a half to get in that position. Yeah. You know, crawling. They, they, they just seem to bottle it quite a lot, the Wrexham. That's the issue at the last, the last yeah. hurdle every time. Playoffs, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, did last year with Grimsby, didn't they? Um, but the, the, the national league, the, league. A, the national league's a horrible, horrible league, though, isn't it? It's it's yeah. a different, it's a totally <laughs> different beast to even the even any league in the year, in fact, any <laughs> league that I know. Yeah, my point, my point is just using Wrexham specifically and comparing it to Crawley is, I think everyone has to sort of get an understanding of the football club, and there's got to be a period of that. Whether that be manager, owner, director of football, chief exec, it doesn't matter physio, it doesn't matter who. You mm-hmm. know, new fans, you've got to understand what it is, and yeah. that takes a bit of time. It might, you know, the, the best managers sort of know it within a matter of weeks. Some others, it takes a bit longer, but you've got to not not take it out of the ball with yeah. knowing exactly what each team is. You know, and what what not move too far away from what they are. You know, you go and manage, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a good example. Newport. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a muck and bullets kind of place. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not sure how many, two million pound houses there are in Newport, but I can't imagine there's to, to, to be many. 
I don't want to sound derogatory, they are salt of the earth people. Yeah, I've been working class like people, are they? Just working class background. people. You know, if you go in there and ask, you know, if you're asking them to pay extra money for a prawn sandwich, and you're, you know, you're asking the players to do whatever that sort of goes away from the fabric of the walls of the football club. And I'm using Newport, it could be any, any football club really. You've got to understand what they are. Mm -hmm. what each football club is and that's that's really important I I feel and that gives you the best chance of being successful both as a manager and as a player yeah well I'm going to come on to your career your club career now because you mentioned uh, Rotherham we spoke about how you played at Rotherham sort of before we came on and things but I had a this is going to tie into Grant. Grant's going to like this. Grant's going to really like this because I, I, I was going to say because there's one thing you're desperate to ask I know you're desperate to ask it Leo He's been, itching to, he's been itching to ask this all day. What is it? What? Your international career. Oh, your, your international <laughs> career? <laughs> right. So I'm looking through because like, I like to do a little... We try not to do too much research because we kind of like to do it on the fly. But I'm looking through and I'm like, oh, you know, so you know, he played, played at Chester, played at Crewe, obviously Port Vale, Northampton, Gibraltar. And I looked up and I'm like, where was he born? I'm like, Rotherham. Right, there's a story here. I mean, it's probably really boring, if I'm honest. You're probably going to just say, no. No, 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 but my, my grandparents were, were in the Navy. Right. They were stationed in Gibraltar. My dad was born there. So you, that is incredible. It's as simple as that. My, my, my grandparents lived there for, I think, about four years. Um, wow. So how does the, the how does the international call up for Gibraltar come across? As in, what happened? What happened? How did you? How did it happen? happen? Um, I, well, there was a couple of English based lads um, that, that played at the first. That they got they, they applied to be a member of UEFA. Uh, yes, about six years before they got accepted, something like that. They become the fifty fourth member. Yeah. Uh, they played their first ever game against Slovakia because the, the manager at the time had worked in Slovakia, at an academy in Slovakia. And they sort of brought a team, the, the, the team drew nil-nil, um, which I think was more of a ceremonial thing um, than, than anything else. And then the second game, I think it was the second game, I got called up. So I'd obviously done a bit of digging. I, I didn't know at the time, it, it, my father had sent an email saying, just so you know, my son's eligible. Thanks very much. So, ah. <laughs> and he got so well, and he got an email Brilliant. back saying, "Oh, we're interested. We'll keep an eye on him." And then just, I just got an email sort of saying, um, you, "You called up." Um, I can't remember what the first games were against. To be honest, I think they might have been. I can't. I, can't, I honestly can't remember. Um, I'm trying to think. Should we find out? Um, I, I think one of them was the Faroe Islands. Yes, so you uh, you made your debut first of March two thousand and fourteen in Gibraltar's second official match uh, in a four one friendly defeat to the Faroe Islands. Yeah, that's right. I have to say it was an eye opener. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I mean, I'm looking at the stadium. The stadium's um, great. I love it. I yeah. love a good running track on a stadium. Yeah, it's right next to the runway. It's brilliant. I've said Gibraltar's a fantastic place. If you've never been, I love it. You should, you it's should go. It's, it's, it's I England abroad. It's I brilliant. went a few years ago. I um, we were in Malaga, and then we went over to Gibraltar. We took the bus in, and yeah. you go over the runway to get in, and it's really strange because you're just in Spain one minute, and then you go over, and the traffic lights just change. Yeah. To the traffic lights from over here, the sockets are the same. And I'm like, this is really yeah. bizarre. And then you yeah. get a monkey stealing your sandwich. Yeah, I stopped. I stopped in the Rock Hotel, and the monkeys come to the window trying to get the, the sugar <laughs> and the teas made. Yeah, um, but yeah, it, it, I have to say it was it was a terrific experience. It was tough, you know. I can remember um, there was some. You, you got to remember the goalkeeper was a fireman. The left back was a hospital porter. The centre half next to me was a customs officer. How many you know, pros yeah. were there? How many pros were there? Two, me and one of them. Scott Wiseman, who played for Preston. Was yes. him. That, and that was and that, it. That, Everyone else was part time. Yeah, yeah. You know, so and 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 they were. I have to say, they've made unbelievable progress because they got they, they went from sort of Group D to Group C in the Nations League. So they got promoted out of their their little group. 
and they're making unbelievable progress because they, mm. they were literally starting. You've got to remember, there's 30,000 people on Gibraltar. So yeah. there's only 15,000 men, of which there's probably only about 500 that's football in age or something, you know, 2,000 or something that's football in age. Um, you know, they, they do a, they've done a terrific job. Um, and, and like I said, it, it, it come a bit late for me. I think I was, I don't know, 34 or something at the time. But playing against Germany in Germany two months after they've won the World Cup was... That's exactly what I was going to ask you. It was <laughs> Was, What's that like? What's what is that like when you're in that <laughs> that position when you're looking over at the other team? Because like obviously when you're playing at a League One, League Two level, you're looking at players that are, you know sometimes yeah. well, maybe a bit of a step up, but not that a step. It's, it's well, when I'm looking at the Germany squad, you're looking at Thomas Müller, Goetze, Podolski. I, I was just like, wow. Just a point though that shows how much Germany respected you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, we. we and it sounds crazy. We were sat in the hotel the night before in Nuremberg where we played. And it was their, I think it was their first home game after they won the World Cup. Then when they just beat Brazil 7 1 in the semi final of the World Cup. Yes. And we've got a fireman in a hospital porter rocking up, you know. So we we're sat in the hotel the night before having this evening meal going, this could get nasty. This could get really horrible for us. So we've got to stick together regardless of what happens. Yeah. Uh, and and you know one thing about the, the Gibraltars, they are extremely, immensely proud of who they are. They are fantastic people. I, I, I won't have a bad word to say about them. No. Um, you know, and we only lost four nil. I said we only lost four nil. Mm-hmm. It, it felt like a um, a decent result given where we were and where where Germany were at the time. Um, you know. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Manuel Neuer pulled off an unbelievable save from a lad called Liam Walker, who nearly scored from the halfway line. Um, it was, Could have been it was, also different. It, it, well, it was, well we were, I think we were 2 0 down at the time, something like that, but it was an unbelievable save and all that. And <laughs> I can't remember, we got a corner near the end of the first half, and me and Scott Wiseman was was running up for this corner. And, and bearing in mind, we hadn't got out of our half for 40 minutes or something, and we were 2 0 down. Um, Thomas Muller just turned to me and Scott as we were sort of trotting up the pitch, knackered. And he just turned to us and went, this is your big chance. <laughs> 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 and obviously, me and Scott are still crying as the cross comes in from the corner. Because um, he, he, I have to say, he was talking to us throughout the whole game and he was real good fun, I have to say. Um, you know, and I think he scored. He might have even scored too, I can't remember. Um, but it was, a, it was, you know, stuff like that. You, when, you, when you get to 34... Um, and you've you've played mainly lower league football, but you've been a pro for however long it was, seventeen years at that point. You don't think them sort of nights are going to happen? Um, no. So, yeah, I, I I didn't think we'd end up talking about Thomas Muller, it's the brilliant. German national team, it. on the lower mm-hmm. league. Look, so now we've got a way, and as we can segue in, and we can invite <laughs> Thomas Muller on as a guest now to get his side. <laughs> Oh, yeah. we've just, we, that's it. We're going to skyrocket. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sure he'll have forgot about the World Cup win three months before and he'll remember the conversation yeah. he had. Really. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> if I, I, think he, I think he will, me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if, if not, I'll just get him to lie. <laughs> it's just yeah. that. Um, so, moving on to your, obviously, that wasn't the point. I'd forgotten that point. I told Grant about it before we started. And then I can't believe that. you forgot it after going I, on about yeah, it. Do do you know, I've been more. that excited that I was like, this Germany game. I can't wait. <laughs> so mine's about, and the reason I think Grant's going to be happy about this is, so from Rotherham, you went to Mansfield. Who brought you yeah. into Mansfield? Uh, Keith Kill. Hartlepool manager. That's why I think Hartlepool Grant Hartlepool manager. Yeah. He also then, signed me for Chester. I was just going to say, you then left Mansfield and went to Chester and keep followed Keith Kill to Chester. Um but we actually had a question from a, a, a Mansfield fan called called Russell. He just basically wanted to know, you know, how did you enjoy your time at Mansfield? It was a short term deal, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, I I, I left Rotherham in the Championship. Um, I signed for uh, Mansfield on a three month contract. Yeah. That were that were literally um, a bag of chips a week. But if I scored a goal, we kept a clean sheet. The attendance was over. 18,000, you know, half of them were called Doreen. I'd get a proper wage kind of thing. 
it was one of them contracts. Wow. Um, but I backed myself, you know, because I, 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 I like the football club. <laughs> I had other offers. Um, it, it helped that it was only sort of 40 minutes from from Sheffield where I was living because yeah. um, my wife was heavily pregnant, um, which had a big factor in the decision. But I also knew that the, the team was a terrific team. You know, yeah. you, you Liam Lawrence, you Lee Williamson, they all went and played higher. Kevin Pillington, the goalkeeper, was a United. You know, we had a, we had a Tom Curtis, Wayne Corden. We had a proper good football team who played the right way and it helped. Yeah. Uh, all them things, I'm not, I'm not particularly money orientated. No, not particularly. I'm more about feel and style and, you know, them kind of sort of things, really. Um, so, yeah, Keith, you know, I think I played the first hour of many games. He said, right, he's a contract to the end of the season. And then I signed another another two years there. Um, but unfortunately, Keith left the football club when Carlton Farmer come in. Sorry, Carlton Farmer. Um, Is he... Has he contacted you again this season to get your playing boots back on? <laughs> no, no, no. no. I've, I've would you say, would you say yes? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think even Keith Kerr would, would have me at the minute. The, the shape I'm in. Even, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I went for a run. I, I, I go running often, two or three times a week, but I actually pulled my calf on Monday, so... Um, You'd fit right in at Hartlepool this season. <laughs> 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 An injured centre-back. Get him in yeah. the squad. Um, yeah. Well, you went to Chester. You followed. You followed Keith to to, to Chester. The, yeah, the move wasn't that straightforward, was it? There was a bit of a issue at the beginning. Um, I've I've got it here. It says an accusations of an illegal approach. Do you want? To, I, I think time enough times passed to tell the whole story. Oh. Um, Disclaimer: <laughs> <laughs> We didn't. We didn't plan this, guys. <laughs> no, no, no. This is what what happened. Was I? I was at Mansfield. Um, I think I had a year left, and like I said, Carl Palmer had become manager. Yeah. Around Christmas time the year before, and I'd been out for six months. I had, a, I had an operation on my Achilles, and then I got deep vein thrombosis. Um, oh, wow. So I literally had to sit while well, I was in hospital for a week uh, bed bed bound and then I couldn't do anything for three months while these blood clots dissolved and then wow. I could start running again and then I couldn't have any contact because the doctor said if I got a whack I'd bleed to death so I thought it best not to play football Pro- that probably best yeah. to chill out yeah that, you made, that's, you made that that's what it was so, so anyway that, that summer uh, I went to see the, the new manager of, um, I'd been in obviously and I went to see the new manager of uh, of, of Mansfield, and, and I said, "Well, what's happening? I've got a year left." And he said, "Quite rightly, you, you've been injured. Let's see how you get on." I said, "Not a problem." Um, that was at the beginning of the summer. I went. Uh, I went to uh, got married. Um, Congratulations! I, thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm still I'm still married. To the Congratulations! Ceremony. Congratulations! That, that's, the big, that's the bigger achievement. Yeah. So you know, whatever it is, what is it now? Uh, Eighteen years or something. Um, you get less. And, and and because Keith Kerr had left rather acrimoniously, he subsequently sued Mansfield and won uh, a discrimination case. Oh, right. Which was, was sort of going on in the background as players. You don't really know. You sort of know things, but you don't know things, and all that kind of stuff. I was laid. On a sudden lounge on my honeymoon, I get a phone call off off the manager of, uh, uh, of, of of Mansfield, and his name comes up. I'm laid next to my new wife, and I answer it. Hello, your wife says, "See, <laughs> I'm thinking this is somehow some some of the, one of the oh, players." Wow. Hello, and it's the manager of Mansfield Town Football Club. They were the first words he spoke to me. Um, on the phone, not the first words ever, but they're the first words. And I'm sort of like, you know, you, you know what you like when you're on the holiday. Not that I was, not had a drink or anything like that. It was two o'clock in the afternoon or something. And you're sort of just thinking, what's going on here? Is something with a camera on me? Is this one of the players playing a prank on me? There's all this going through my head. I've looked at my wife. She's sat up now on the sunlander, sort of mouthing, what's up? And there's all these things going around in my head thinking, I don't even know what this is. 
Did you, know who it was? Did you know who it was at that point? Yeah, yeah, his, his name oh. come up. And, and, his, oh, and the manager's got a very distinctive voice. Um, I said, what, 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 what are you on about? In his, his words were, I've just had an abusive phone call off a woman and it must be your wife because you asked for a new contract. <laughs> I just started laughing. I just started laughing. I said, I, I, I don't know what you're on about. I can guarantee it's not my wife. So I don't know where you're coming from, but I'll end the phone call now. And I put the phone down. And I turned to my wife and I said, I'm not sure if that was the manager. But it certainly sounded like him. So I took the story and all that. Shit. I rang my agent and he went, are you sure? I said, well, I can't believe it's... His name come up on my phone. It's not as if like somebody's got my phone and changed his, yeah. his name to one of the lads' numbers or anything like that. I'm 5,000 miles away. I, I can't for one minute. All the lads are on holiday as well. This is June, middle of June. You know, I've been for a run in the morning and all that kind of stuff. So I, I'm like, can't get me around it. The, the, the agent then makes a couple of phone calls and said it was him. I said, well, that's it. I'm not playing for him again. It's bizarre. I said, I'm just not playing. If, if he thinks that of me and my wife, my new wife, I will not ever wear that shirt for that man while he's in that football club. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. And, wow. you know, so, so um, that, that was the precursor to it all. That, that's, that's the story. Um, now that's 20 years ago, whatever it was. Um, yeah, up 20 years ago. Um, and they're the kind of things that people don't. I, I, I still don't know why, why I did it, I, I, and I've no idea who the woman was, obviously. <laughs> hey, can you imagine if he'd rung you and gone, Yeah, we've got that new contract for you here? <laughs> you I, I, want to, but I want to sign it. There's a principle, no, no, but I mean, yeah. if he'd not been ringing to say that, if he'd been ringing to say, Yeah, your missus has been on phone, she asked for a new contract, I've got it here in front of me. Like you're, you're just laid there going, what? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you, you, I still don't know what or what, what possessed that man to do that. It's such a bizarre way to handle someone with. Obviously, yeah, I have said Peter Shirtcliffe, who was the assistant manager, who obviously was at, um, I think he was at Bradford as well for a while. Um, he he was terrific. He really helped. He, he was really rational and sort of said, look, I've heard what's happened. <laughs> I'd be exactly what you're saying, what you're doing. I think it's out of order, but, you know, we'll, we'll make sure everything's all right for every party. And it was. It wasn't after that point. There was no acrimonious, from, certainly from my point of view, you know, <laughs> so the that, irony is I, 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 I couldn't, I, I, had to, I had to, no, no, I had to go in every day um, I couldn't train with the team. It, it, I had to just go to the gym on my own. Um, in, in fact, was at that, one point, was that your sorry. decision or was that? No, no, that was his. No. That was his. Um, so I still didn't know what I'd done. I'd asked for a new contract, or that's what was happening with my contract. And then that, it, it seemed to me that he wanted me out of the football club, rather than just saying, "Look, I want your money," or not that I was on a lot, um, or I don't think you're going to play for me, or whatever it might be. He, he, he did this. I, I, like I said, I was in the gym. He um, he phoned me while I was on the treadmill, and it, it rang. <laughs> and um, Ronnie Moore had just taken over at Hartlepool. What manager? And, uh, what a manager? Yeah, he isn't my manager at Rotherham, but I like Ronnie. He's a good guy. Um, and and there was rumours that uh, I hadn't spoken to him um, at all. Uh, I don't think anyone had spoken to him about me. I don't. I don't know, but I certainly not spoken to him. I, I believe nobody had spoken to him. Um, and I get the phone call off of the manager of the football club again. I'm running, so I'm out of breath. Hello, and they just started abusing me again, <laughs> saying, "Why? <laughs> why on earth? Why on earth do you want to go and play for a manager that's released you from from you know two years ago or whatever it was, eighteen months ago?" He's this, he's that, you're this, you're that. What, what are you on about? And I, I, I stopped the treadmill. I can remember stopping the treadmill and there was a lad next to me who was in, coming back from injury. It's pre-season at this point. What are you on about? You, going to Hartlepool. I said, 
one, it's none of your business, really. And and two, you, you're just making things up. I'll come what point you. did you deck him? I did. <laughs> I didn't. Better make you wish you did, didn't you? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to deck him at this point. I, I, I just stayed out of his way. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any reasoning with people like that. No, I it, think that's, that's bizarre. And, and and in the end, Chester made an approach to the football club, and they they ended up buying me for twenty five grand or something. That's it's how it got... came about. And it's... and it was done. It was done above board. The problem was is um, he signed me, Tom Curtis, and Luke Demesh, who had all played for Mansfield the year before, and two others. But they one was Craig Dove, who played for Hartlepool, Middlesbrough lad. And the fifth one, I can't remember it was. And we'd all done the press and released it before Mansfield had done it. And that's where the the it was a timing yeah. issue rather yeah. than a, a um, like a an illegal issue. approch. Yeah, yeah. It was, I could we, we had... kill right now if I, if I really wanted to. It's you know, it'd be my manager oh, for don't say eight, that because Grant will tell you to do it. No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll be about to watch Love Island. Um, yeah, <laughs> was he, was was he, was he was in a hot, sexy mood? <laughs> he's well, hot chocolate. Yeah, his wife in I, a sexy mood. I, I saw, yeah, I saw the interview last week. I bet she was delighted. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, another thing about that, from what we've heard, apparently she wasn't at home. She was with him, wasn't she? Because I think in the drive on the way, I think he drove home with her. From what I got from the follow-up interview, he drove. I think. Yeah, so she was there. I think he got a bollock in. I really do think yeah, he I got do. a bit of a bollock in. I, but, I've no idea, but I know I, I know my wife would give me more, <laughs> more than a bollock. His than response was perfect when the oh, yeah. media guy asked, like, so did you get the hat trick? And he just went, a gentleman never tells. <laughs> With a tear in his eye <laughs> and yes. a look over his shoulder first. I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm, not, I'm not sure I've ever seen that kind of interview on a media training course. I know. <laughs> well, and I think that's like how on earth. It was good fun. It was good fun. But anyway, that, that's that's the the illegal approach. It wasn't. It, it was more yeah. the timing issue between the two football clubs. But it all it was all instigated by an absolute ridiculous thing. It's, not it's not by my part. I, re- I lived forty minutes up the road. weren't yeah. angling for a move. I'd asked what was happening going into my last year of my contract, and whatever it was, about a month and a half later, to two months later, just got met with volleys of abuse towards my wife, new wife, towards me later on in the in the pre-season. And I just, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't going to start, I wasn't going to play for a guy who thought that little of me or, or, or went about his business like that. Don't blame you. It's, it's fair play. Is there, is there any, so to sort of start to, to wind it down and we, we, we want to, I think we like to ask questions that are a little bit not silly, but they are silly, Grant, because Grant asks silly questions. But usually we ask them I do players, use silly, so silly questions. I have a question for you. Is there any move that you could have had that you didn't take in your career that you wish you had? I know you mentioned about obviously crew saying that in hindsight, leaving when you finished 12 would have been perfect, but um was it Hartlepool after Mansfield, just to spite him? No. I'll tell you what, we were in a horrible no. position at that time. No, but Ronnie Moore never came for me. So yeah. it, it was all a figment of Carl Palmer's imagination. It was never, it was never even on the cards, I believe. Not even, I, I didn't even speak to Ronnie Moore at any point. Any wow. Rats, blah, blah. I think the only, no, I don't, I think the, the short answer is no. The only thing, uh, when I, when I left Crew, I went to Port Vale. Yeah, um, and I signed a two year contract. Just got promoted to to League One with Crew playoff final. Um, then signed for Port Vale, um, and we'd play. We'd done all pre season, six weeks pre season under Mickey Adams. A tough pre season, one of the toughest. Tim and Ronnie Moore were probably really close in terms of what were the toughest pre seasons, um, and we played. Uh, the the last preseason game uh, was on a Thursday, Thursday yeah. afternoon, because um, 
the club hadn't got the safety certificate for the for the the stadium yet. So we played Coventry behind closed doors. We played really well. We lost one 0 to a deflected shot. Um, and the first game of the se- that season was on a Tuesday night. I think it must have been the Carling Cup or whatever it was at the time, the League Cup. Yeah. Um, so we, we was there in the changing rooms after, and the club was in administration at the time. And Mickey Adams come and said, "Right, the, the administrator wants a word. Um, so once you've got changed, no believe, you know, just sit and listen to what he's got to say." Um, and he came in and he basically said, right, everyone who's in the middle of a contract, i.e. a two-year contract, a three-year contract, you're fine, you can leave, there's five of you. The rest of you who have either signed a new contract, was at the club last year that signed a new contract, um, or have been brought into the football club in this summer, your contracts aren't worth the, the paper they're written on because you signed them with the football club that we're in administration and that's not allowed. Um, and we can't guarantee you payment going forward that's a bit of a blow with sort of four days of the season before the start yeah. of the season wow um, you know that, that is what it is you can't do anything about it um, but having just been promoted with crew out of League 2 <laughs> the only is the right bike there the lad called Adam Yates um, he come to me the next day and said uh, my agent wants to know if you want to go to Northampton so, I don't know. <laughs> Not even, I, I, it, it, I just thought you just get through it. I'd been through a similar thing at Chester, where the, the, yeah. you didn't get paid because the owners were the owners, um, and nobody was looking to, to particular leave. We'd just been told we could leave because you, you might to, you might you, not get paid. You, well, you you hadn't signed a legal document. That's what it was. So you've got no sort of employment sort of contract. So anyway, that, that this was this was on the, the sorry, it was on the no, this was on the Tuesday. Sorry, the, the, the game was on the Tuesday, the behind closed door game. So it must have been on the Saturday, the, the first game of the season. The, the time is wrong. So on the on the Wednesday, Adam Yates told me this, and I said, "I don't know." Eddie Boothroyd rang me on the. Bear in mind, I'm a free agent, so I don't even need to tell the football club at this point. Yeah. Eddie Boothroyd rang me on the on the third and said, "What do you think?" I said, "Well." I, I hadn't even thought about it. I said, I'll, I'll speak to you, but I don't, I don't, I think it's probably a no go. Right, okay. He said, well, come down. So I trained on the Thursday, got in the car, went to Northampton on the Thursday afternoon. Um, Did you feel I like you were cheating? Him, I told, no, I told the manager. I was, oh, straight, right. I, was, I was straight with the manager. I said, look, he wasn't pleased. He said, but there's nothing I can do. I, I don't go behind people's back. Just be straight and honest with them. Um, so anyway, that was that. On the Friday come, and Ed Booth, I said, right, we need an answer. I said, well, hey. the end's sort of like in a bit of a spin. Um, and I don't know what, what to do. He said, well, we can guarantee you money. They can't even guarantee you money. You know, two-year contracts, very similar. The, the, the money was very similar. It wasn't a money thing, but we can guarantee you money. And I thought, well, you know, do a... Do, do I do that? Do I not do that? Eddie Boothroyd sold the club fantastically well, really well. Trains, you can stay, you can do this, you can do that, blah, blah, blah. He's a Bradford lad. He knows he can sell. Eddie Boothroyd can sell. Yeah, and, and he did it ever so well. And, and in the end, I I, I, um, I told the, the manager, in fact, the last preseason game was on the Saturday, sorry, that's right. And um, because it was a Tuesday start, that's right. And I, I phoned Mickey and said, look, I'm, I'm coming in, but I think I'm going to end up going to Northampton. Um, and he said, yeah, come and see me. And I went and saw him before the game. He was, wasn't best pleased, but I did end up signing for Northampton. So do I regret signing for Northampton? Well, <laughs> I think I scored four, four goals in the first 11 games for Northampton. Then I told me Achilles, mm. uh, four centimetre to me because I, I didn't, never played for him again. Um, you went whereas Port Vale, Port Vale went on to get promoted that year. Well, we we played you in the playoff finals that year, but you were on loan at Wrexham. Yes, I believe. Yeah, so I think yeah, you. No, we played Newport. Wrexham played Newport. Yeah, yeah, but we, we, Northampton we, played Bradford. Oh, sorry, that's right. Yes, yeah, yeah. Nil. So 
Yeah, we, yeah, That's which right. we we were three nil against you that game, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. so That's it was. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I look back and I think should I have stayed at Port Vale? Probably because they did start this stuff out. Norman Smith, where it come in, who steadied the ship, if you like, mm-hmm. and he sold it to to, to uh, Kevin and, and Carol. Now are doing a fantastic job at Port Vale, um, and probably I should have. Yeah. Not, I don't. I don't. That's, it's toss of a coin, but that's the only one really. It's a difficult one though, because as a, a career as a player is a short career, isn't it? Yeah. At the end of the day, you've got to think of where you ultimately want to be and, and food on the table. I suppose does it come down to that? Well, well it was because you know there was no guarantee of me getting paid, and, and and I have to say for the next couple of months, the Port Vale players got paid late and some got half wages for a bit and all that kind of stuff so it wasn't rosy straight away no. um, you know if, if it did anything it just sent it, cemented me as a, a crew legend because I'd just sort of done the dirty on their local rivals but it wasn't <laughs> it, honestly it, it was, Swing, Swindon I, fans are going to love you as well yeah but it wasn't sort of my it wasn't sort of instigated by me. It wasn't you put in a you put in a sort of no win situation really as a player in that situation. Yeah. Which is yeah. I, I won't I wouldn't envy any player being in that situation because I didn't like being in it. But you know, you've just got to try and make the best decision at that time. And I look back and I think maybe it wasn't the right decision. Maybe it was. I don't know. I don't know. It could have gone either way though, couldn't it? And like Grant says, it's a yeah. short career and you, you kinda <clears throat> Especially in the lower leagues, we're not talking about hundreds of thousands of pounds a week. We're talking about uh, money, money to yeah, money to survive. Really, you know, it, it, a it Premier is. League player could go six months without getting paid, and a lifestyle it ain't going to affect them. Correct. But it's, a week no, missed at this level is not going to be yeah. sustainable. So that, that's the only time where I could have maybe because because it was my purely my decision. There's yeah. been others where you go, well, it could be my decision, it might not be my decision, and all that. There's, there's all that, but then there's a lot of hypotheticals around stuff like that. Um, that's the only one that was truly, truly my decision. Cracking. Well, we've uh, we've reached the end, and that was uh, that's beautiful. Honestly, <laughs> that was that was incredible. <laughs> Genuinely, that was incredible. Grant, walk us out. And then we'll have a we'll have a chat after. Well, this sort of lower league look off record, uh, <laughs> off, <laughs> off the record stuff that never sees yeah, the light of day. That never sees anything. Yeah, <laughs> um, Grant Walker's out. Uh, David, yeah. By the way, thank you very much for this. This is genuinely like, yeah. This this has been awesome. Um, first manager we've actually had on. We've had owners. We've had players. But first first manager we've had on. So it's good to get that view. Because obviously we get the selfishness of players going, yeah, you know, I'm the best thing. It's sliced, it's sliced bread, and yeah, it's best. It's nice to hear a manager go, no, you're not. <laughs> so, <laughs> gotta be careful you say that too. Yes, yeah, <laughs> not Cal Palmer. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've got to get this point in right one day. Walkers out. Everyone, thank you so so much for listening along again. This this has been an absolute pleasure. This one has been it's been a hell of a lot of fun. I don't forget to share this out on all your social channels, Twitter, Facebook, whatever we put on. Make sure you hit the share button, smash that like button as well. Give us a rating on Spotify, Apple Music, rate it five out of five. Say whatever the hell you want on the comments. We don't care. That doesn't count to our ratings. Just rate it five. I am read them. No, we don't. I think I've read one or two, but that's about it. I am once again, David, thank you so much for giving us your time tonight. I am. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on and all the best for the future in your career. We hope to see you back in the management hot seat soon, mate. We really do. Everyone, we have been the lower league.